And that's 11 o'clock. Welcome everyone to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I will be ripping up paper and exploring with you today. I'm gonna take this up to this. Oh, I'm gonna rip this one as well because I don't need this anymore. I was just ripping up paper in preparation for today's workshop. We're going to be exploring chance. So I'm just gonna rip up some of this paper. We've got some materials. If you have a recycling bin that has uh, some cool colored paper, um, even some printed paper uh, that you have permission to use, ripping that up so that you have it ready to go. Um, or you can just follow along by watching me today. So welcome to another, uh, so this is, this is series nine uh, chants. Um, I would like to say hello and welcome. Also in our chat channel, you'll see Leah Horlick, who is our program manager at Art Starts, is here with us today as well. She is available um, to answer any questions that you have. She'd love to see comments uh, while you are making along. While I'm making, my camera is pointed down, so I can't answer you in real time. But when we're all finished, if you want to leave me a question as well, I'll answer as soon as our session is done. But if you have any questions, um, you want to know about the program, just reach out to uh, Leah in the chat channel. So let's get started and let's get started the way we always like to start our Art Stars Explorers is by reviewing the rules of Explorers. We have three simple rules while we are exploring together. The first one is, is that we like to practice respect. We're not always perfect at it. We practice respect by checking in with ourselves and checking in with others. That could just be asking how people are, also giving people space if they need it. We want to respect our tools by using them. If we get them dirty, we want to clean them up, but also respecting everyone else. And if we're sharing um, a pair of scissors with our siblings or perhaps our neighbor or our classmate is over, we want to make sure we're checking in and um, sharing all of our tools. And we also want to make sure that we practice respect by uh, acknowledging and respecting the land and the people. Um, I, my broadcast right here, my studio, is on the stolen and unceded land of the Coast Salish people. So I want to specifically say uh, thank you to the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Skohomish people while I practice my art here. And I want to try and be um, mindful and be the most respectful guest I can be while I have the privilege of making art on these lands with you today. The second is that nothing is for key. I pulled some paper out of my recycling bin. I encourage you as much as possible when you are exploring along with me to take things out of the recycling bin, to take things um, that were about to be thrown out as long as you have permission. Um, and that when we're all finished today, you take them apart again. So whether that means just taking everything that we make and putting it right back into the recycling bin um, or being able to take apart the pieces and then put them back where they are supposed to go, we want to try and make nothing for keeps kind of tied into this. If we're not making anything for keeps, we don't really have to worry if something doesn't happen the way we plan because we don't have a plan. We're just trying everything as it comes up. If I'm making something and you come up with a different idea, go follow that idea. Try whatever you want to try while we're making together today. All ideas are good ideas. Even if whatever you're making doesn't end up looking exactly the way uh, you had hoped or that you, or maybe you want it to look good, that's okay. It doesn't matter. The idea was good. The fact that you tried it was good. And practice surprise. So if, you, if you're not planning for something to happen, then you can always be surprised when something turns out great or when something turns out badly. You don't know. So you get to practice surprise together. So those are the three rules of explorers. I'm going to put them off to the side so that they stay with us but are out of the way while we make. I'm going to move my little mini mini character. Oh, we already started at 11, so I'm going to move that off to the side. And let's play with some chants. So if while you're watching, if you wanted to keep ripping up some paper and getting uh, getting some there, different pages here, and I wanted to have um, some different colors, because I always like, whenever we uh, rip up paper and use it as a material, make this pile of ready-mades. They're ready-made for us to work with. I like to have lots of different colors and give me lots of options. But you, if you just have a white piece of paper in color paper, go for it. It's still interesting because there's different shapes, uh, different sizes when you're ripping. Um, and be really random with it, right? Just rip the page however, however it happens. But make sure you do get permission. And that's why it's great to take things from the recycling bin. 
because generally when things go into the recycling bin, you don't have to worry about getting permission. The other thing that I pulled out uh, this week is uh, some dice. And if you have some dice, um, you may need to ask for permission, but if you have any board games um, in your classroom or your house or wherever you are viewing this, you might have a board game that you could pull out and borrow. Make sure you remember which game you pulled it out of because we always want to put things back when we're all finished. Um, but if you play uh, different games, you might be able to find all kinds of different dice. So if you ask for permission um, from somebody who plays a lot uh, with dice, you don't have to just have the six-sided die. You could have uh, one that has 20 sides. You could have one that this is a 10-sided die. So whatever dice you can find, um, that's awesome. That's a way of playing with chance. But if you don't have any dice or board games that you can pull from, you could also grab a coin because a coin is kind of like a die. Can you see why a coin would be kind of like a dice? This is the six-sided face, and this face has the bear on it. This side has a picture of a queen on it. That side has a two. So really, a coin is kind of like a dice if you're wanting to play chance. And if you want to have four sides, Right? So here, this is a four-sided die. See how I've got the number four here? And then whatever is on the bottom facing me is the, die, or is the number that I roll. So there, there's a four at the bottom. So that's four. If I wanted four with coins, I would just need two coins. And then I could go um, one, one, two, two. And go that side, and that had the number one. So I rolled a two, right? So there's lots of different ways that you could um, make up a game if you don't have dice. You could also build your own dice. What would that look like? If you took, scrumpled up a piece of paper and you wrote various numbers on it and you rolled the paper, could you make a die that way? There's lots of different ways that you could um, make a ch chance object. I just mean an object that you can't control the outcome. You can't design what's going to happen. So for example, if I wanted to roll a two, right, I could tell the dice in my most commanding voice, I want a two. And it's not necessarily going to happen because this die can't hear me. And no matter how much I, I might want it or I might command it, or maybe uh, if you watch a superhero comic or a cartoon where somebody has the ability to magically control this, that's not you and me. So this, this object is a chance object. We don't know what's going to happen. And so we can assign meaning we can we can make kind of a code of what's going to happen when things uh, when certain sides come up and play with chance in art making if we wanted to play with dance when it comes to um, a die what we could do is we could start at one and we could go maybe jump and however you want to make your code here uh, you can copy mine or you can make your own at home two Maybe arms up. Let's raise my two. Here's my two. And then three. Uh, how about uh, maybe, maybe it's better to go uh, hip shake. No, actually, I like there. We could go hip shake here. What's the difference between those two? Maybe they aren't. I'm not a dancer. Can you tell? And then maybe. Actually, you know what? I want hip shake to kind of be butt shake. I'm going to make this one head shake. Head shake. There you go. That's different, right? That's a different part of our body. We're thinking about our body, our hips and our butt are down there, and then our head is up there. So we have to shake our head or shake our hips. I just want everything to be really different so that when we're dancing, we've got all this different kind of movement. What else? Maybe, oh, you know what? There's one more further down. I'm going to go foot shake. And then there's only six sides on my die, so the last number that I have is six-sided die, or you had chosen a ten-sided die, then you'd have more options. If you made up your own um, die, you could pick however many kinds of uh, sides that you want and assign those different things. If you're making your own die, too, you don't have to have these pips or numbers. And when I say pips, I just mean the dots on this. So these one, two, three, four, five, six has 
one that says six like this, right? But those are just two kinds of die. What if when you made your die, you had a sun on one side? Or if you made a happy face or a sad face, right? So you could assign different values to your chance object. And I gotta come up with one more thing for dance. So how about, uh, how about shoulder wiggle? I like that. And that's different from a shake, I think it's a wiggle. So shoulder wiggle. Okay. So then what you can do, and if you, especially if you're playing this with a friend, that could be really fun. Is that you shake it and shoulder wiggle. So you can't see me, but if you are following along at home and you want to warm up for our art making, you can wiggle your shoulders, jump up and down. Take my, take my character there. Jump up hard if it's, yeah, so hip shape. What does that even look like with a paper tube? If you had a doll or you're playing with a toy or you had an object, you could also play this game with them and see how you could make the character move to try and do it. And if you have something restricted like this, see how my arms are glued to the side of this character? So what would it even look like if I was gonna do a, a foot shake or a hip shake? or a head shake, right? So then you can figure out the different ways that you move your toy if you yourself don't want to or can't do any of these, especially if you're, um, if you're dancing with somebody who maybe can't move their hips or it hurts when they move their foot. It can be fun to give them something else or maybe you both have an object and see how when you make the object dance, what you come up with. So that's one way of, of playing with chance kind of like a warm up. So I think I'm going to take my sticky over here. We're going to call this warming up with chance. So this is one way. This is warming up our bodies by dancing and moving. So moving. But another way that you can warm up with chance is if you had a page, if you had a piece of paper that had some words on it and you were allowed to. So you can see I took this from my scrap bin. I've already gotten permission to cut um, a piece out of this, and this was an old storybook. But if you don't have a page like this, you could grab a newspaper. If you had a magazine that you had permission to cut out, you could, you could use a magazine. Or you could just write your own set of words. And uh, it can be really fun to just pick like really, really strange words that don't have anything to do with each other. So like, uh, cats, uh, six, and you could just keep going like that and just pick a whole bunch of random words, whatever comes into your head. That's a kind of playing with chance as well. If you're a writer or somebody who likes to write stories, being able to come up with ideas um, and just coming up with random ideas is a good way to exercise your brain and get your brain ready for writers. But because I have this page here, I'm going to use this page. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll mix in some of those words too. And I'm just going to cut out a couple of these words here. It is a lot faster when you write it yourself because you've got to cut out all these little words here, but because um, it's easier to cut right big words rather than, than little words type here, the small, the small size of these words. If you had a really big long word versus a short word, what would be easier to cut out? Try it out. You could also rip up some words if you wanted to go fast. I know you don't know what, what I'm going to ask next, so you might be going, oh, I'm not sure if I can do that. But remember, all ideas are good ideas. And even if whatever you're trying, um, wherever you're watching right now, if it doesn't completely match what I'm doing, that's okay. It doesn't have to completely match what I'm doing. However you try and explore it, explore, um, even if it doesn't match up, what I like to say is um, ask yourself for you to cut out these words right now 
um, and you cut out half words or letters and then I give you some instruction and you go, well, I can't do that. Make up your own rule. Or ask somebody else to make up a rule, right? You don't have to follow exactly what I'm saying um, if you come up with a better idea. Okay, I'm just going to do those ones because I don't want you to have to just watch me cut. But that can also be fun, especially if um, you've got lots of words or if you're working with a friend, uh, your cousin, your grandparents, your teachers, your classmates, they could all be cutting out a pile and then all of a sudden you'd have a big, uh, big pile of words. Okay, so, oh, I said I would also cut out some of these words as well. Is we're going to throw the words just like we threw the die to come up with um, a warm up for drawing. And so this is really great if you, if you know you wanna draw something or you've been asked to draw something but you can't think of what to draw or what to paint or what to write, then what you can do is, is you can um, pick all these words up and I'm just gonna put them in my hand, but you could find a cup. Oh, I'm having a hard time picking up my hair. There you go. Um, you could put them in a cup. You could put the object that you wanna find and then shake them up. So just like the die, right? So if you're shaking your die, you shake up all the pieces of paper in here. And then I'm going to drop them. And then the first, whoop, the first word that I see, I saw toe. That's what I'm gonna draw. Okay, so foot there, maybe some toes over here, and then a really big toe. Oh, maybe, maybe they stub their toe there. All right glue them down so that I have this kind of legend that shows me. There you go, toe. So same thing, shake it up. Okay, this time I'm gonna throw them down and the word that falls into this square is the one that I'm going to draw. And you can make up whatever rules you want, right? You're making up these rules as you go along. You know what, my new rule is if I can't pick up the piece of paper, I'm gonna get to the side, there we go. See, I'm making up rules. I didn't have this rule as I came along. You could make up rules too. Your rule could be um, you're only going to pick a word that is flipped upside down. Or you're only going to pick a word that has the same letter as your first name. What rules could you come up with for this game? Oh, I said, did I say this square? I think I said this square. So I'm going to pick six. Both touching there. It's funny. I cut out all these words and it's the big words that are the ones that I'm choosing. Okay, six. How could I draw six? Well, I could draw it, I guess, in big bubble letters. But I could also draw uh, a human that I think is six years old. Or maybe they've got freckles, two eyes, or maybe some really big hair. Oh, six pieces of hair. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And then uh, maybe maybe a number of objects that are six. So I'm going to draw six apples. One, two. Oh, they're kind of looking less like apples as I go along. <laughs> Five, and there you go, six. And so this is a fun way to warm up your brain. If you had um, a magazine that you could cut out, you could also go looking for these words as you go along, right? You could go, okay, now I have to find in this magazine here that I have permission to cut out six of something. And that could be six eyes. You have to find six different bottles, or you have to find uh, the word six throughout the magazine, right? And so it becomes a bit of a scavenger hunt when you play it that way. Okay, I'm gonna do one more warm up with cat. I have a sleeping cat sitting beside me in my studio. So I'm gonna do them, I'm gonna draw of my cat sleeping there beside me. And then their tail is off to the side here. And then their cute little paws are like this. There you go, there's my, there's my cat. But then I could draw a different kind of cat, right? You could see how many different kind of cat you want to use. This is all just a warm-up game, right? So I, I did both 
my dance game and my draw. Here, I'm going to write draw. Warm up game, all just using chance, right? So this one I used my die. And this one, I just cut out a bunch of different words. And remember, I, even though I cut out all these words from here, I still ended up using ones that I wrote myself. Actually, you know what, just to show, right? Random, that's another word that's, that's part of, um, it's part of chance, right? You don't, you're not actually planning. So I'm gonna pick, uh, I'm gonna pick this one. Which one is this one? Oh, began, Whew. how do I, how do I draw began? And this can be really fun, right? These ones were easy because these were all nouns. These were all things, right? These, um, these, these had a very concrete or visual or um, there was something this, but began, that's how do you draw began? And that can be really fun, right? When you have to start asking your, yourself these questions of how do I do something? How do I draw something that is harder to draw? Okay, so for my part, I'm going to draw began as the number one because began kind of means a start, right? So first, oh here I'm going to add the letters S T. So first for began. Um, what else could I draw? You know what? I'm going to draw the starting line of a running of a running circle. Ooh, how do we even draw that? Um, there. So there's a track. in there and that's that's my start line so it began the race began there but however you draw it right whatever you come up with all ideas are good ideas and some ideas are going to be harder than other ideas and that's that's the exercise part of warming up our brains okay I feel like we have warmed up with chance so I'm going to take both of our warm-ups and I'm going to put them over here now we're gonna color with chance. So just like before, where I said that we could have, here, I'm gonna grab this paper from over here, that we could have some kind of legend that we create for our colors, is that we, we could do the same thing for um, coloring something. So if you have a coloring book or a coloring page, and this can be really fun to do with your whole family or with adults, um, teachers, anybody who's older than you, because there's a lot of adults who are really into coloring right now. So this is a game that you could totally play with an adult who's into coloring. Um, and even if they don't know they're, they're into coloring, you should, you, should ask, you should ask everybody to color with you because it's really fun. Okay, take, I'm gonna take one of my die again. Six sides again, but you could remember, you could take whatever side you want. If you have 20 different colors in your coloring box, if you want to uh, go through your crayons and go, if you have a crayon set that has a hundred crayons, you could find um, a 100. Uh, it's only got uh, 10 sides, but you can see how it has 80, 20, 60. And so then you pair that up with another, uh, here is it, another one like this. And then all of a sudden, do you see how I've got 30 and six? So that's 36. So if you had a hundred crayons and then you had a die that allowed you to do a um, hundred, then you could also assign 100 colors to each number that you could roll with your chance object. But because I'm just doing this live with you today, I'm just going to pick my six-sided die. So I'm going to go you know, in this little higher so you can see. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to go red, uh, yellow, green, purple, and orange. Right, that's the most simple of all the colors. Usually the colors that you're going to be able to see in a rainbow. It's nice that there's six of them. It's really easy. Okay. So then you're going to find a coloring page. So I don't have a coloring page because I wanted to also show you that even if you didn't have a color or a pencil, that it's sometimes it's really fun to just draw your own coloring page. And you could do this also with another person where you color the outline 
and then you give them their picture and they color the outline with their black marker and give you the outline and then you can play this game together. So I'm going to really quickly draw a scene, some different things that I can color. And you can do this as well or you can go look Trying to do really simple lines here, right? Because it's just a coloring page. We want to have things to color, right? Okay. You know what's really funny about this picture is this this flower is the same size as those people. That's a huge flower. <laughs> That's okay, right? Whatever we're, whatever we want to draw here, that's going to be that's that's what we're drawing. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying things out. Okay, I just wanted to add some lines to my blanket here, so there are more things to color. Okay, so there are two ways that you could do this. The first one is is that you could just pick um, a, a color, and whatever you roll first, you could just color the first thing. Doing this is to um, assign some numbers before you even start, because that means that whatever you roll, you're going to have to draw or color in that, that color there. And so that, that also takes the opportunity for you to go, oh no, I really wanted this to be red. But if you roll purple, you have to draw purple because you're playing with chance, right? Um, so if, you're, if you have a color pa coloring page that you've already taken out, if you wanna do this as well, well, what you could do is, is you just start writing some numbers in different places. And if you don't, if you really want to challenge yourself, turn this over so you don't, so you're not tempted to use any of these, um, any of your numbers before you start doing this. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, oh, sky, and then I'm going to go six, one, three, Four. This flower, uh, I'll make it two. But then the, the leafy part, I'll make it five. And then I think all the grass, I'll make those five. This flower, I'm going to make three. Uh, maybe the rest of the grass, so all the rest of it, I'll make, uh, I don't know, two. The people's head here, I'm going to make it. And then I'm going to pick a few of these. Oh, and then the uh, basket, I'm going to make that three. Oh, no, I'm going to make that one uh, two. And the reason I changed my number is because I saw three here, and I didn't want those to be the same color right next to each other. Now I'm going to go four, 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 four. And then I'm going to leave all the other spaces between uh, a blank color. So there we go. So I just took the number, I don't, you know, I don't think I have the number six anywhere here. That's funny. <laughs> I'm going to make, you know what, I'm going to make all the, the grass into a six because that's really easy to do because I want to have all the numbers here. So I'm going to make all the fives into sixes and then um, I'm going to make the, the grass, I think the grass will also be six. Yeah, okay. So all of the rest of the grass will be six. Great. So there we go. So we're going to roll and see what we color first. So I'm going to grab some, uh, grab some pencil crayons so that I've already got one for each. I've got a red, yellow, and I'm just picking the first, the first versions of these that I can find because all we're doing is playing with chance, right? We're not trying to make a beautiful finished picture which is another reason why it's fun to draw your own. If you have a coloring book and you want it to look really good because you want to show it off or you want to stick it on the fridge when you're all finished, then I understand if you don't want to do this. And so drawing your own makes sense like this. 
But if you're okay with your palette, when you're all finished, you could recycle anyways, which is great, then doing this activity in the coloring book is really fun. Uh, okay, what else do I need? I need blue. And then what else am I missing? Red, yellow, green, blue, purple, orange. So there we go. Now I have all my colors right there. You know what? I'm going to pick a different yellow just because I think that I need to sharpen this yellow. I didn't bring my sharpener over with me. There we go. Okay. So let's get coloring. I'm going to turn off, whoops, I'm going to turn off my voice and I'm going to color for a little bit. But I, we would love to see what you're, or if you have any comments while I'm coloring, leave them in our, our comments. So I'm going to turn off my voice and quickly color this and then I'll uh, talk to you again when I put in some color. Almost done. Now I gotta roll the dice until I come up with six, because six is all that's left. Oh, not bad. So you could also play this game with somebody else so that whatever color that they roll, that's the color, that's the part that they get to color in. This section is mine. It's whatever, whatever color that you roll, that's the color you get to color. Okay, there we go. So what do you think? Were you expecting any of those colors? Have you ever seen a sky that's purple? In the summertime, I've seen grass that's yellow. There's one other way that you could play this. These numbers like this, what you could also do is you could play a game where whatever you roll in sequence, that's the, that's the color that, um, that you are going to do on the page. So for example, I went one is red here for that, but what you could do instead is go two, three, four, five, six, and then what you could do is go, okay, so everything that is one, I'm gonna do blue. Do you see, because I rolled, so for my first roll, for my first turn, so these are turns over here, 
And these ones over here, these ones are the kind of the ledges. Right? And so, okay, so it's turned to, so everything that was one now, those all had to be colored in blue. And then for two, whoop, spinning die, six. So then everything that was two would have to be orange. And then for three, everything would have to be purple. And then for four, everything would have to be yellow. Five. Oh, five is purple. And do you see how I've already got two purples here? Well, that's what happened. That's chance. We didn't make the decision. So you could have the rule, the rule that you can't have it again. Like my picture is going to have a lot of purple and then see what that looks like. And you could do this multiple times, right? You could also trace out your picture and do it all over again and see what each picture looked like every time you rolled it. If you played it as a game with a whole bunch of people or with your class where everybody had the same picture, but everybody rolled a different, uh, different color or different turns, you would each have a different coloring job. Okay, let's roll the last one just to see what would happen. One is red. So we'd have lots of different colors, but we'd have a lot of purple, right? And so with chance. But it can be really fun to do this game and come up with your own rules of when to use the die and um, how to assign these different values. You could play it again. You could do another level where it's now what turn are we going to, to do first? Which color are we going to do first from this one over here? We're going to color in reds first, right? And so you can go back and forth. You can choose these however you want. You can make up your own rules. You can make multiple coloring um, sheets. There's lots of different ways you can color with chance. Chance, we've done some coloring with chance. Of course, we're gonna have to use our big pile of ripped paper before we're done today's session. And that's what I'm gonna do with our last 20 minutes. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with multimedia by chance. And so um, you can still use your die. You can come up with a way, but I'm going to push our, my dice to the side because for this one right here, the way that I'm going to play with chance is I'm going to use gravity. And gravity is um, how when you pick up a ball, or you pick up an object and you hold it up. And when you drop it, what happens? Does it go down or does it go up? It always goes down. When we're on the earth, when we're on this planet, yep, everything that we pick up it's going to fall down. But I can't tell where exactly that's going to go, especially if it's lightweight or it's got all these different edges to it, right? I don't know where it's going to fall, but I do know it's going to fall down. So with that one thing that I know, which is that it's going to fall down, I'm going to take a piece of paper. I'm going to have my ripped up pages here, which I'm very excited about. And then again, by chance, the only thing that I'm going to control is that I want when I drop the paper for it to stick to this page. So I'm going to take some glue. If you don't have any glue or you don't have any paste, so if you have some of the wet glue at home, the, the white paste, you could put that all over page two. But this also works with water. So if you wanted to spray a white piece of paper and then just lightly, you just want to mist it. You don't want to get it soaked so that it's really wet. But I mean, try it. If you have permission and you've got a clean space that's easy to clean up, or you go outside and try paper and you drop it on a really, really wet page. And then what happens when it dries? What does it look like? Go check it out. But when we get really messy like this, especially when we, um, we could leave a mess and we want to make sure we're respectful, make sure you get permission before you do this. But when we're just doing it where it's just glued in the space, this is pretty contained. So as long as you have a piece of paper and glue and you've got permission for these people, pages here, this should be pretty easy for you to do at home. But for sure, if you wanted to try doing it outside with lots of, uh, lots of water and paper, check it out, see what happens. All right, so blue. And wherever, not being very particular, I could make a pattern, I could go just around the outsides, however you want to glue it, there are no rules. So I'm just making sure it's really covered. There we go. Drop my glue. And now we're going to pick up the paper 
and drop it. <laughs> and try it from different, different heights as well, right? What happens when you get it really high up there? And just let it fall on the page. Take a second to look. Guess what's going to happen. I wonder which pages of paper is actually going to stick here. Then what you want to do is you want, and then same thing, we're going to just knock some of the paper off so that we can see what actually stuck to the page. So I have the benefit of being in my studio and everything that I do is on my cutting mat here. So it's really easy for me to clean up. If you're doing this on the floor or in a playground or play, uh, playroom or something with carpet, you're going to want to make sure you get your vacuum out or you, you pick up every single little piece um, when you're all finished. But if you are making time and room for, um, for making, using this kind of confetti or cut up paper can be really, really fun to just try out. But we want to make sure we pick it all up when we're finished. Okay, so that was the collage that I made with Appen. But I've got a few more pieces of space here that I want to see if the paper is going to uh, stick to the second time. So I'm going to do this one more time. So this time, again, you could close your eyes or you could just be really random. I'm going to press it down, <laughs> right? Making a mess because I have permission and I'm going to clean it all up after. But what's that going to do? How is that going to be different? I'm not making a plan. I'm going to turn the paper around. And then same thing again. What stuck this time? Oh, more paper stuck, right? But I still wasn't planning where it placed. All I did was change the pressure of how I put it on the page, right? So before it was just the gravity and where it stuck when it just fell down. You see while, I, while I'm talking, I'm still cleaning up, right? Always want to make where. There we go. Nice, nice and tidy. And then I'll do some more cleaning up when we're all finished. But there you go, right? I just made this whole collage. Oh, look, I touched it. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> And it can be really hard, really tempting when we do these things and we are out of control. We didn't design it to want to go in with our tweezers and go, oh, I really want that paper over there. To not do that, and just let wherever it fell be wherever it fell. So this is a collage by itself. What could you do with this? Well, there's a couple of things that you could do. You could now take the piece of chance that you did and now add some really intentional pieces to it. So whether that's you coloring some things, actually here I'm going to take my coloring chance page because all of the things that we're using today can be used for something else. And I'm going to cut out some, I'm going to cut out this tree here. If you had a magazine, you could cut out a couple of different pieces of uh, things from the magazine that you like. If you started to see a pattern or um, a face or a image in the paper that you drop down, you could start adding some things to it. You could start drawing on top of your on top of your chance collage and add some more things to it. This is a great way to just start a background for a picture, right? If you just didn't want to color in your background and you wanted to have some texture or you wanted to have a background for a picture that you were going to take with your toys, or if you wanted to just have a backdrop um, for a store on one paper and then cut it out and then stick it on top. If you had a, a, um, a poetry assignment at school and you wanted to make your poetry page look a little more interesting, you could stick that onto your chance page. But there you go, right? So now with all that, all, all this chance here, I'm gonna stick down and make a whole new scene with this cool background. I'm going to put the tree up here. So these parts here that I have in the front, they're very intentional. I've made the decision on design. I made some choices, which were, you know, which paper to rip up, how, how high or how low I decided to drop the page, what size the paper at the bottom was going to be, what kind of glue I used, right? 
So I made all of these decisions, but there was a part of it that I left to chance. I didn't place each of those pieces, but I made space for chance. And so the, the, the reason that I'm being so specific and um, intentional about this is that there's a difference between making art by accident and making art with chance. And the difference is, is that when you're trying something and you accidentally spill ink or you sneeze while those things to happen, but they might upset you and disappoint you, especially if the thing that you were coloring or painting was something that you wanted to give to somebody or was for a school project or was turning out really, really good and you had a picture in your head. And that can lead you to feel really disappointed or frustrated when something doesn't turn out the way you want it to. And so that's the difference between when you're making something for keeps and you're making something while you explore. Exploring with chance allows you to go, what happens if I, and then if you sneeze, you get to answer the question, what happens if I sneeze while I'm making this picture? That's the time that you want to experiment. That's the time that you want to ask those questions and see what happens not when you're trying to make something for keeps. The difference when it comes to chance is that we're telling chance we're okay with whatever happens. We don't have any expectations, so however the paper is going to land, that's how we want it to land. And when we learn how or what happens when we drop paper from four inches away or 30 centimeters away or from our shoulder height away, we now have the answer. And so now it's not chance when we do it the next time because we know, we know what's going to happen. And that's, and that's the difference between making something by accident and not really being intentional on whatever happens, which can have a, a messy look. It can feel like you didn't really care or take the time to do it if you're just doing whatever. But if you're doing whatever on purpose, then you're making. And you can learn for the next time you're going to do something intentional for keeps, what things work and what things don't. And that's why it's important to play with chance. This is why it's important in all of our explorers to really be okay with whatever happens. It's okay if the thing that we're making doesn't turn out to be perfect because we're not trying for it to be perfect. We just want to see what happens if. Okay, so I'm going to cut out a couple more things here and add to my chance collage, my multimedia collage. And so I say multimedia because um, I've got a couple of different um, art sites. So I have the different pieces of paper, but now I have marker and I have uh, pencil crayon in in this collage here, right? Because I am cutting out from the thing that I drew over here that had marker and pencil crayon on it. Okay, I'm gonna glue both of these things down. I'm curious what yours looks like. And yours is gonna look completely different, right? Because even though we did the same method, even though we both used chance to make something happen, our things are not going to look at all the same. Even if you colored your page, this page, exactly the same as mine, it's still going to look different. And if you colored yours different, it's going to look different. And if you place it on the page, it's going to look different. So even though we're all using the exact same items, it can still look different. Okay, I'm going to put in my yellow cloud. I actually really like that I had yellow there. And you know what? You might not like how it turned out. This is something else, is that when you're playing with chance, there's still, there's still the opportunity to be disappointed. You can be frustrated because something didn't, you know what, I really like this pickle over here. I'm gonna pickle it over here too. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> it makes me laugh and we're just trying things out. Um, so maybe when you're doing this, you're really frustrated because a piece fell exactly where you didn't want it to. And you really are frustrated, you're angry with it. Take a second before you move it, and it's okay if you move it in the end, because remember, we're just trying things, but take a second and say that out loud. Whether, you know what, say it to yourself or say it to somebody else, but say, it makes me angry 
or frustrated or upset or that I don't like it when it's there. And taking the time to acknowledge, to say out loud, to say to yourself when something feels good or doesn't feel good can really help you when you're making art or when you're working on projects because sometimes those are signs that you need to take a break or that you need to practice something a few more times before you can feel comfortable. And I'm not, I'm not saying that when something makes you angry, you should do it over and over again. But if you're frustrated with this, maybe it's just because you haven't tried it before, because it's new. Maybe it's because you didn't have a good breakfast that morning, or because somebody said something and you were distracted and you wanted it to turn out differently. Just because you feel that you feel that way next time. And so I encourage you to take a second to go, yep, I like this, or I don't like this, but then to do it again at a later time, maybe when it's safe, maybe when you're by yourself, or maybe just write down how it made you feel and then try it again in a year or a month or a week and see what's different. And that's also part of art making is documenting or telling yourself or writing, your, writing it down or journaling how you feel when you're trying these things. All right, so today we explored three different ways of exploring chance in art making. We explored warming up with chance. And so we had a movement exercise where you got to write your own movements. We had a, either we made the words or we cut them out of a book and then we drew them and that was our warm up. We did coloring with chance, where we colored a page by using dice, where we assigned our own colors, and then we uh, assigned an order to do it. And then we took our coloring with chance and we added it to our multimedia by chance, where we did a collage by dropping the paper. I have five minutes left in today's workshop, so I'm gonna move this over to the side, but you can keep working on any of these ideas that we made. And I just wanted to show you really quick um, a chance object you can make yourself. Excuse me. So before I said that if you didn't have a die, you could make your own. But there's also, I also talked about um, having different legends or different objects that are on each one of the sides. So there are two ways that I can suggest you making a chance object. So the first one is if you have a piece of tape, especially if you have some of that green pink. Oh, okay, but I've got this yellow masking tape. So if you've got some of the green painter's tape, it's just easier to come off. But if you have some masking tape, what you can also do is you could put them on each one of the sides and cover the pit or the number. And here, I'm going to do this to a couple of different pieces here, or different sides. And some of the smaller pieces of tape are going to be easier to cover the smaller numbers. And I'm going to need a bigger piece of tape to cover the bigger numbers. One more small. I need two pieces of tape. Oh, nope, that worked. Cool. See, I don't know what will happen, but I'm going to give it a shot. All right. There's the five. And then I think I can hang on. Okay. This is old masking tape that I have. <laughs> That's why it's coming apart like that. Okay. So I covered all the sides. So now what I can do is I can make my own pieces in here. So I'm going to do a happy face here. And you know what? I'm not even going to do six different ones. I'm going to do three happy faces and three sad faces. Because you get to decide how many you want here. Having more of one thing is going to make it um, it's going to have a higher possibility of it happening more often, of you rolling it more often, because there are more chum that it could come up. And that's math. When you start learning about probability in school, um, it's really easy to start understanding how often something could turn up on a die. All right, so sad face, sad face. And you could do different facial expressions and practice them in front of a mirror when they roll. 
for you could choose you could assign colors to the different sides of the face all right so there's my die with just happy and sad faces right and so you could play a game where somebody says something and then you have a die when you roll that and so that's one way of modifying a chance object and then assigning your own value to them but then another way is just with a piece of paper and however you want to manipulate the paper if you wanted to fold it if you wanted um, to cut it into pieces out of this piece of paper and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color some of the parts of the ball Oh, there's some red and over here is some purple so you could do this with paper you could also do this with uh, some of the tape on top of the paper you could take a piece of paper that already has color on it and use that and so you don't even have to assign the color you could just use whatever color shows up when you roll the crumpled piece of, uh, of newspaper or paper that you found in the recycling bin just want to make sure that all the sides have a bit of color. Green over here. If you're um, on a crumpled piece of paper, but I'm still doing it. I just have to push quite hard when I'm uh, when I'm pressing on there. And then one more. I think I need some. Is it orange? Yep. So there we go. I made a chance object in one minute. Oh no, two minutes with some pencil crayons and a crumpled piece of paper. Orange. Blue. Orange, purple, blue. <laughs> right? And because um, it's just a crumpled piece of paper, right? So every time you use it, it might roll a little bit differently. So that's a really interesting chance object that you can't predict at all. So that's today's session. We're at 12 o'clock. Thank you so much for joining Leah and I for Chance today. We're gonna have one more uh, workshop next Saturday at 11 a.m. exploring Chance. You'll be able to see this video captioned up on Facebook later this week, but you can also see all of our videos, the workshops, our themed videos, and our one-page resource um, documents that have some vocabulary and extra activities that you can find on Art Starts dot com slash explores dash Leah and I thank you so much for joining us this week. I'm going to leave the camera running for another three or four minutes while I clean up my space because that's really important for us to do. And if you have any comments, questions, or you want to share what you made today, we would love to see it. See you next week and thanks for joining us.